This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Bumper to Bumper Radio, Arizona's number one car show. I'm Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy and master certified technician. Dave Riccio is not here today. He's playing hooky. He's actually not feeling so good, so we'll give him a break today. But I've brought in some help. A couple guys sitting with me to carry the conversation. Got Dave Denman from Dave's Car Care, one of our bumper-to-bumper shops, and Pascal from Virginia Auto Service. And as usual, we're here every single Saturday to help you with your car. So if you've got car questions, car problems, thinking about buying a new car, selling your old car, if you've got a question on a repair, doesn't matter. It's up to you. Just give us a call if you want to participate. It's 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And if you're the texting type and you're not driving, you can do that at 411-923. A lot of things going on this week in the auto, auto world. There's tons of auctions. And if you want to get out and see some neat cars... Now is the time of the year to do it. We've got the Barrett Jackson Classic Car Auction that's going on. You can see that on TV, on Velocity and Discover Channel, Discovery. But the real way to do it is go out there live to Westworld. And uh, you don't have to be a bidder to do that. That is a car show where you're going to see things that you may never, ever see again. So I encourage you to go out there and check it out. We are going to have an email of the week today. And uh, we're talking about emissions testing today. Uh, there, there's a lot, a lot that goes into getting your car to go through emissions. The state has developed this program as far as, uh, you know, statewide, or not statewide, it's primarily in Phoenix and Tucson metro areas, but nationwide, we want to help keep the air clean. And part of that is keeping your automobile running clean and uh, getting it to go through emissions every couple years or whenever your cars do. So we've got some tips uh, that we're going to talk about. You can find us on Facebook. If you go to Facebook and search for Bumper to Bumper Radio, we've posted some links there and the, the link to the uh, emissions website, myazcar.com. There's lots of information that we'll be referring to that we found there. And so, Dave, Pascal, thanks for uh, coming in and helping out today. Oh, we're happy to be here, Matt. I bet. Pascal still is a little bit shy behind that microphone. He doesn't want to say much, so he's probably just going to look at me. So um, let's talk about the emissions testing. So if you've got a car, at some point you're going to have to go through emissions. So, um, you get it. It comes in your registration. It says emissions test required. And there's some things that you can do to study for this test, I guess, if you will. Uh, a couple things I want you to know about the testing, and, I, and I've learned some of this. You don't have to do test motorcycles anymore. Didn't know that. They, uh, so if you're riding your Harley and, and uh, whatever other crotch rocket you've got, no more, no more emissions tests for you. Uh, the emissions testing, again, you can go to myazcar.com and find information there like the hours, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturdays, they go 8, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., I believe. And um, Try and go in the middle of the month. Everybody rushes and waits till the last minute. So go in the middle of the month when you're not under pressure. Because if you have a failure, you're going to need some time to get that car fixed. Well, Matt, that website will also give you the current wait times at the stations. Live uh, camera. You can see you know, where your best yeah. avenue is to spend the least amount of time. Yeah, there's, some real, there's a lot of good information. That's one of them, Dave, you can find. Yeah, find the emissions testing station close to you. We use that all the time. We know where they are. But you can log on and see what the wait time is. And they've actually got a camera that shows the line. So if you're at work, maybe you're at lunch, and you're going to try and sneak out and do it on your lunch break, take a look at that, myazcar.com. And, again, that link is on our Facebook page as well. Uh, and you can also test up to 90 days before your test is, is due. So that's, that's a good thing to know. So just do it when it's convenient for you. Don't wait till the last minute. So let's talk about some of the testing. We'll start with the e what I think are the easiest ones. And that's going to be your 1996 in newer car. We call that OBD2 or Onboard Diagnostics Generation 2. O on that type of testing, there is no tailpipe. We're not, we're not sticking the tailpipe in and measuring any, any emissions or anything like that because the 
the computer systems in this in these newer cars are sophisticated enough to know when there's a problem, and that's why the check engine light comes on. So those cars are always doing a self-test. And, and if that self-test continues to pass, your check engine light will stay off, and your car will typically go through emissions with no problems. So I guess the first thing to do before you take your car down is make sure the check engine light's off. And if you haven't had any work done on the car, you're probably going to breeze right through. Would you agree, Dave? Well, that's true, Bat. But, you know, there's the instance where that check engine light came on 45 days ago, went on, went off, and you think, okay, I'm good to go. My, but yeah. yet, the hidden deal is, are the monitors ready? Yeah. Are they reading? Are they uh, functioning to design to to monitor the whole emission system. Yeah, and what Dave's saying, the monitors, that like I said, that car is always testing itself. And when it says, ah, you know, I'm not feeling good, so to speak, bam, the light goes on. So the other thing that can make that car think that it's not feeling well, for example, maybe you're just going to spend the weekend, tell you know, your wife, whatever, I'm going to get the car ready, I'm going to do the oil change, you know what, I'm going to maybe go ahead and get a battery at AutoZone or, or whatever, I'll put that in. Well, when you disconnected that battery, that computer just forgot everything it knew as far as the the, the uh, emissions testing and its radio monitors. So you might get in trouble. Go, you're not going to literally get in trouble. You might get in trouble at home. State doesn't care. But you're going to go down there and you think everything's good and you're going to fail because that computer hasn't had time to uh, to check itself, to ask itself, am I okay? So So if you haven't done any repairs, you're probably good. If you've done repairs like that, a battery or, or something, or had the code reset, just had the check engine light reset, it's going to take some time before the car will pass emissions. Well, you, not only that, uh, Matt, you know, there, there are, are, what, six, seven, eight monitors in some cases. And in some cases, such as an evaporative monitor in Arizona, you're not, it's not going to clear itself. Right. So the state will allow you to have one of the monitors that is in an unready position to get through. It, so yeah. it's all about information. Yeah, exactly. So the other thing that will prevent you from, from passing is that little connector that you've got up that they have to plug into. That's called the OBD2 diagnostic port or connector. And they want to plug into that. So we've had cases, and they will fail you for it. It may be that you know, a lot of people kick it with their shoe getting in, or maybe you wear boots or con work construction and you're getting in the car. You might break that. And if it's not properly secured, fail. They won't even test your car. It, it's not that they fail it. They just decline to test. Uh, one of the other things they won't test for on, a, on that newer car is if maybe you called Progressive and Flo sent you that little monitor to see how you're driving. If that's plugged in, they're not going to touch it. They won't take it out, and they won't reinstall it. So those are, the, those are the things that you need to be aware of on your newer car. And again, you can't cheat. You can't have your buddy with a code reader reset the, the deal, reset the light, turn it off, and run in, get the test done. It's going to fail. One last thing on those newer cars, too, 96 newer, the check engine light actually has to function. So if you're out car shopping and you go turn the key on just to the on position and the check engine light does not illuminate, you someone's hiding something from you. You need to you know, run and hide or go get that car inspected. In some of those cases, that's not just a bulb. That's an instrument cluster that can be a, a costly repair, you know, from $500 to $1,000. Oh, yeah. So you, you, let the buyer beware. Yeah, absolutely. So now the next one's coming. We're going to talk about your 1995 and older cars. And I think it's 95 back to about 70 or back to 80 in that area. And again, all this information on myazcar.com. Now those cars, that's a little more difficult. That's where they run the car. It's an IM147. And, and, we're, and it used to be an IM240, and what that meant was 240 seconds of driving, simulating city driving, they're going to measure the tailpipe emissions. It, it's reduced down now to, I believe, it's 147 seconds. There's not much you can do to prepare for that test. You, uh, you can go in, assuming that your car, is, you, your car should be running good. You should never present a car that's not running well. Uh, if the car's running good, go to the test. You have to have good tires on the car. They will reject your car if you have bad tires because they've got a guy in that car, in that environment, 
driving that car up to 60 miles an hour on the rollers. And if that tire comes apart, very dangerous. Could damage the car, could seriously injure somebody. And that's why they also shove you in that little booth. Yep. And uh, Well, we also have the condition of the rear brakes are important because mm-hmm. they've got to be able to stop that vehicle on the dyno. Uh, so adjustment can affect it. Yep. Not just bad brakes, but brakes out of adjustment. Yeah, absolutely. So these are things to get ready just to even qualify to where they'll start to do the test. And now, of course, they're going to check, and, and one of those things is they're going to check to make sure that all of the emissions repair, all the emissions control components are there. Nothing's been bypassed, taken off, uh, or anything like that. For example, maybe an air pump or an EGR valve been removed or, or a canister purge system. So or if, the diverter valve or yeah, the rail. You, you name the component. So if your car has been, so to speak, unmolested, it's never been touched, it's, it's never been altered, it's running good, Go ahead and take it down and see what happens. Now, taking that car, now at 96 a newer car in the shop, we can, with a great degree of certainty, tell you if your car is going to pass emissions. I mean, 99.9% of the time on an OBD2 car, 96 and newer, we know that you're going to, we're going to pass. But on the older cars, it's not so sure that you're going to pass just because we stick the probe in the tailpipe before you go down. So I always encourage you to go get the test when you're due for it, and then if you fail, go into the shop. But we're going to keep this conversation going. We've got to take a break here real quick. And if you got a car question, especially about emissions today or anything you want to talk about, give us a call at 602-277-5827. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. It's really coming down now. And that little voice is saying shoulda, coulda, woulda. You meant to call Keiko Roofing last storm, but you didn't, did you? Now it's raining cats and dogs. And Mr. Shoulda, coulda, woulda is watching a puddle form on the ceiling. If the roof on your home or business is over 10 years old, get rid of shoulda, coulda, woulda. Call Keiko Roofing at 602-944-4600 for a free checkup today. At Keiko, we install peace of mind with the finest materials and and the most skilled workers, all backed by the owner's pride guarantee. Flat, foam, tile, or shingle, Kaiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Kaiko has you covered. Since 1994, Kaiko has repaired or replaced tens of thousands of valley roofs, over 50% of our business coming from referrals or repeat customers. In fact, over 98% of our customers say they would refer us to a friend. For more information and financing options, go to KaikoRoofing.com. Kaiko Roofing. We're crazy about quality. Hi, I'm Scott, General Manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions, for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at tricitytransmission.com. Go where the pros go. Tri-City Transmission. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. All righty, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy, and we're going to get right back to business here. We've been talking about emissions, and there is so much to talk about. I could have kept blabbering and blabbing for 10 more minutes. We've got a few callers on the line. But we're going to quick finish up on on emissions. We talked uh, the newer cars, 96 and older, 96 and newer, 95 and older, where they run the test on the rollers. They're actually driving your car. So before you go down again, you want to make sure the car is ready to ready. Make sure it runs good. Uh, and if you fail, now you've got to go to the shop. Okay, the shop at the shop. We you have to pick a facility that's got the right equipment. In these cars, you're finding fewer and fewer people that will actually work on these cars. A lot of shops don't have the equipment, and a lot of the newer technicians, they don't know how to work on them. I mean, they're just more difficult 
we're, the cars are worn out. There's all kinds of, I mean, you could, there's so many things. Just imagine you've got a 150,000 mile car that's, that's uh, now 20 years old. How many times has that hood been open and closed and how many people have worked on that car? Well, Matt, you know, think about it. In our lifetime, we're seeing technicians that think carburetor is antiquated. Well, and they are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, the, the skill set to be able to uh, discern, you know, what's causing that rich condition, lean condition, um, very few shops. Again, like you said, the first question they need to ask, do you have a five gas analyzer? And the other question I would ask along with that, is it portable that you can actually put that in the vehicle drive it down to the road under the cruise condition that the emission station is going to look so they mm -hmm. can see that those um, readings are changing yeah. you know, under the RPM. Yeah, and, and I agree. We have the portable one as you. We have we have the same piece of equipment. But I think I don't think you necessarily have to have a five-gas analyzer because if you know the car is running right, you've tuned it properly, all the components are there and working, it's pretty safe to, to be able to say it, it's going to pass. But, again, you never know. We take them, I think just like most of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper radio shops that you'll find at bumper-to-bumperradio.com, we take them. We want to take your car to emissions and make sure it's going to pass. you got to remember, too, on that state website, you can go look at myazcar.com, and you can go look at the shops that are working on these cars, and you can see the report card. We have to fill out documentation, so we want to pass. Well, not only that, the important thing on that website, you can also find out that car's history. Yeah. So if you're buying that car and it's a 1995 or older, you can see whether that vehicle has struggled to get through emissions for the last five or six years and how many times they've attempted to get it to pass. And that is... It should be a telltale sign for you. Yeah, you know, I didn't know that. I've learned, to, I, I've been refreshed about emissions this week. We had a problem with the car, and, and we had one we had, we're having difficulty to get through. The car's failed emissions 12 times since March of 2008. Tell me there's not an underlying fundamental problem with this, this car. And at this point, it's worn out. But we'll come back and get you some more tips on that that you're going to find on that website and to help you get through emissions. But first, we're going to go with John in Mesa. He's got something going on with his 2002 Honda Accord. John, what can we help you with today? Hi, I've got a Honda Accord. And when I drive it down the road, I, get, I go over a bump or a crack in the road, I get this noise. And it sounds like it's a glass issue, like it's loose. So I take it to Honda. They put in a couple of little push plugs, you know, for the moldings. They said, oh, that must be it. It must have been that plastic molding. But it's getting louder to me. It's, the problem's getting worse. My question, do I take it to a, um, a regular garage or do I take it to a body shop to have that fixed? Well, I, I don't think you're I, – I think at this point you're still sticking with a regular shop. Now, if it is the molding that is actually making the noise – Maybe I don't think so. Okay. I think it's inside the door. I think it's a track or something. Yeah. Well, maybe not the body shop then. You know what, though? There's a good bumper-to-bumper -bumper radio shop in your area, Accurate Automotive. Lee Weatherby was a Honda technician. That was his specialty before he opened his shop. But And, and I know they can fix that car for you, but I think what's important, and, and we try to do it. It doesn't happen every time, but when you have a noise, I, you'll have a hard time getting this done at the dealer, in my opinion. When you have a noise, you want to make your appointment and ask them when you're making that appointment, can you send the technician or the service advisor on a drive with me? Go hear that noise with them. Point out the noise. I, plenty of times we've fixed noises that we heard, but it wasn't the noise that John heard. And uh, so, so that that is helpful in, in, in getting that problem solved and, and narrowing that down. So thanks for the call, John. We appreciate it. We are going to go with, uh, let's see here. How about John? another John in Phoenix? He's got a 2014 BMW. John, what can we help you with? Yeah, my sister in uh, Florida has this car, and she has the uh, run-flat tires. That's what my question is about. You know, she had the sensor that, uh, you know, was showing a, a low tire pressure, and there was, uh, you know, I told her to, to run to see if there was a nail in it, and she found it. I said, well, just take it to a tire shop, and luckily it hadn't punctured it. I guess it was just change in climate, but, uh, you know, she had made some inquiries, you know, on a BMW forum, 
and I guess there's special procedures to fix run flat tires. And uh, you know she's getting like she's got like twenty five thousand miles, so the tires are are getting close to needing replacement. And uh, you know she was looking into getting you know standard tires, and I've uh, been telling her you know to bite the bullet and buy the uh, run flats because that's what they came with from the factory. And that, you know, she'd have to buy a spare tire and jack and everything like that. What is your experience with run flat tires versus regulars? Well, and like repairs and stuff. Well, I think you're both right on wanting to pick tires. Um, I would agree. In, in a lot of cases, just stick with what came on the car. Uh, not everybody can work with a run flat tire, but the part of the reason they put these run flat tires on is one for safety. Uh, you know, you can still go 60 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour, or whatever the manufacturer describes with that with that run flat tire, and, and be safe. The second thing is they're saving weight on the car. You get rid of an expense. They're getting rid of the spare tire. They're getting rid of the jack. They're getting rid of all the tools. They're getting rid of that area that is very valuable space in a small car, and, and the, now you don't have to st- store a spare tire. So, I'm on the fence. If you travel, you're out on the highway. And, and uh, you know you're in a position where if you get a flat, you're in you're in you know really stepped in deep doo doo. I would stick with the run flats. You cruise around town. If if I didn't take my car out of a metropolitan area, I'd save the money maybe, and and just stick with the uh, stick with a standard. Go back to a standard tire. Just knowing that if you get a flat, you're either going to visit the tow truck or you're going to go. Uh, you're just going to have to wait. So. We've got a couple calls waiting and open lines at 602-277-5827. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Greg LaFonsi of Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. Yes, we realize this is a long name to remember, but most of our customers know us simply as ADS. ADS is a family-owned and operated, state-of-the-art, full-service automotive repair facility with an expert staff that has helped us earn the coveted AAA Top Shop Award as one of the best shops in the nation for the second straight year in a row. We are honored, humbled, and dedicated to providing the same level of service to you and your family. We will always strive to get it done right the first time so that you will leave with a smile on your face after every repair or service. ADS is a bumper-to-bumper radio-approved shop with a long name, but a short, simple goal. Customer satisfaction is a number one priority, and everything else takes care of itself. Just east of I-10 on Chandler Boulevard, ADS proudly serves Ahwatukee, Chandler, Tempe, Gilbert, and Southeast Phoenix. Stop by or check us out at AutomotiveDiagnosticSpecialties.com today. Come join Bunker to Bunker the Golf Show at Trilogy at Visancia by Shea Homes on Saturday, January 24th from 10 till 4 as they celebrate the grand opening and introduction of another 900 plus home sites at the Trilogy at Visancia Tour Center. They'll be closest to the pin contest, live music, wine tasting, gift cards to V's Tap Room, and more. Reserve your private tour and check out special pricing and initial release of home sites. For more info, visit TrilogyLife.com forward slash Vistancia. Come live the Trilogy Life. (laughs) It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that'll help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. You know, when I hear that exhaust, Dave, I don't know, I just think of this like old Impala or something with some lowrider and like Cheech and Chong guy just kind of... Hey man, let's go down the corner. <laughs> yeah, I, I love love that sound. Makes me kind of think of a boat too, but welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy. Dave Riccio is playing hooky. He says he's sick, but I guarantee he's out there on his mountain bike somewhere. So we've got a different Dave in here. We've got Dave Denman from Dave's Car Care, and we've got Pascal Adcock from Virginia Auto Service. He's quiet. He's shy. He won't talk. So uh, Dave will chime in and, and, and help out. So if you've got questions or problems about your car, give us a call at 602-277-5827. And speaking of cars and old Impalas, what I was just thinking about, 
if you like car, even if you don't like cars, go to the Barrett Jackson Classic Car Auction. You can't get a bidder's pass today, but take your kids out there. Look at the cars. I, I remember going to the races with my dad for the first time, and man, that set off the dreams. I mean, there are so many cool cars out there. There are cars you will never see again. Some of these cars live in a museum, and they're not, they don't, it's rare to be seen. Lots of cool stuff out there. There's art, there's automotive art, there's there's automobilia, they call it, all these old signs and the Bob's Big Boy and, and, and all that stuff. I even found it. I'm going to go back out there and get a chair. they got these really cool chairs that hang from the patio, this hammock type thing. I about fell asleep when I sat in the thing. It was really, really oh, you, neat. Not only that, you can dress that garage up as your man cave, do your floor, do your toolboxes, do your cabinets. Everything's out there. So That's right. Matt, let's talk about one thing on that IM240 testing uh, on the uh, 90, 95 or older about the fact that when you go to emissions, it's very important that that car be in an operating system. So you need to monitor the car, let it run while it's in, in, in lane. Mm -hmm. And then right before you go forward, when you're in the next car, Raise that idle up to about 12, 1400. Just clear it out, blow it out, let that. The other important issues there is make sure you have no oil dripping and make sure that that vehicle's cooling system's functional, not dripping, mm -hmm. and you're not overheating because they will fail to test you at that point also. You're right. And for those of you that just joined us, we've been talking about getting your car through emissions, and that IM240 is the, the emissions test. So if you missed the first part of the show, make sure to tune in next week at 11 again, and you won't miss out on the first half. You can go to bumper to bumper radiocom and find great shops. You'll also find a link there to our Facebook page where we've linked up with the ADEQ and myazcar.com. All kinds of good information there uh, about your car. So, you know, one other thing on the emissions testing, Dave, and it's a really cheap, easy test. If you're out shopping for a car, maybe you're pretty sure you don't know or, or, or you can't get into a mechanic, which we always suggest. 20 bucks. Go run through the emissions test. You can do that anytime. That's a good sign yeah, that at least the car's running right. If this, if they pass it, they're probably doing all right. That doesn't mean it, that the airbags aren't all hijacked out of the car and and uh, or anything like that. But but it's a good it's a good indicator that that the fundamentals of that car are there. Well, absolutely. You know, you, you still need to have the the safety issues, the brakes, the chassis, that stuff. But you, you're looking at your high cost items of trying to replace missing uh, yeah. emissions equipment. That virtually you better have a friend in the business. Uh, bumper to bumper shop that's going to be willing to dig through the wrecking yards and stuff to try to find diverter valves, check valves. Uh, that stuff is literally not available from the OE manufacturers anymore. Yeah, you got to go go boneyard hunting. So if you've got a car question, car problem you, you want to play, give us a call at 602 277 5827. You can also text us at 411 923. We're going to go with Eric in surprise. He's got a 2009. GMC Sierra. Eric, what can we help you with today? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, uh, my truck is a Duramax diesel, and last year was the first year I had to bring it through emissions. And uh, uh, two questions. One is, why do uh, the diesels have to go through every year? You know, that I don't know. I'm not sure why they have to go. Maybe they're... I haven't got the slightest idea on that one. I, I'd have to check into that, and uh, maybe we can follow up next week, or maybe you can go to myazcar.com and find out. But did you have a, another question about that, too? You said two questions, I Yeah. Think? When I did the test, uh, the guy left me in the truck, and uh, he ran through <laughs> a series of, of things, and, and one of them was uh, that I had to do several times was put my foot, right down on the floor and leave it there for like three seconds and i was really uncomfortable with doing that and he goes well we don't have to do it you can you know pull on out of here <laughs> yeah he, he, he was brutally honest well you don't have to do it and you'll fail i tell you what i have a diesel excursion man that is sketchy doing that test i don't <laughs> Scared the heck out of me. Uh, and I'm like, uh, I don't want to blow up my motor. And he had said that, <laughs> you know, if you haven't changed anything and taken your rev limiter off, 
your your engine won't allow you to do that. Yeah, exactly. But it's still, no matter what they say, man, that's scary. Just floorboarding that sucker, and it's, wah, I mean, it's winding out. And what they test for in the diesel, they have the you know bigger tubes because there's much more flow, and it's called opacity. And they're testing for the particulates that are in the air. And I don't know all the details about that, but I can tell you, if you are driving a diesel or any other car, for that matter, where they're going to measure the tailpipe, there is something to be said about blowing it out. I mean, oh, absolutely. You know, the old guys say, "Ah, oh, just go blow it out on the freeway." That that is absolutely true. You just need to get that truck out and flog it for a little bit. You know, uh, like you're leaving pit lane, getting on the freeway. I mean, just wide open throttle. I'm not telling you to go speed and be dangerous or anything like that, but but you know, maybe drop it down a gear and, and keep that thing up in the higher RPM range, even on your gasoline engine. Just just blow that sucker out. So thanks for the call. And we are going to go now with another John. We've got lots of Johns today in Glendale on a 2007 Kia Rio. Something with a stereo, John? Yeah. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. I have a CD that's in it. It plays fine, but it will not eject. Okay. How do you eject CDs from a car radio system? Well, Dave's raising his hand over here. Maybe he's had some experience. Dave, go ahead. You're in Glendale. Let Let me just give you a referral. Go to Cardinal Stereo. They're at 43rd Avenue. They're between Peoria and Dunlap. They're excellent at being able to retrieve that and get that out and find out what the dysfunction is. That's where we send all of our clients. We're right at 51st in Peoria, and I know they'll take care of you, and uh, you'll get a straight scoop from them. Well, there you go, John. That's the answer. See the guys at Cardinal Stereo, and and uh, and remember Dave Denman. He's just he's the one here in the studio. Dave's Car Care, Fifty First Avenue in Peoria. For any other things you need on your Kia, but you know you can maybe take that apart and get it. I wouldn't take a chance on messing it up. Sometimes you can get an exchange stereo, and you know from Kia or from the repair shop, Cardinal Stereo can probably get you one. Or maybe it's time for an upgrade. You know, maybe the car didn't have Bluetooth, and you want to add that and and add some GPS, so they can, I'm sure, do that for you. So, thanks for the call. And it looks like it's Dwayne's turn. Dwayne's got a Caravan 2010. You're on bumper to bumper radio, Dwayne. What can we help you with? Hi guys, thanks for taking my call. I have a 2010 Caravan. I had an engine light come on. I took it to a shop to check the light, and they said I needed a smoke test. Since then, I've changed the battery, and the light has not come back on. Should I take it to a shop first or just go take it straight to emissions? That's exactly what we were talking about in the beginning of the show. So what happened is the reason the check engine light went off, we're going we're gonna to have to circle around quite a bit on this one, but the reason the check engine light went off is because you disconnected the battery and the computer forgot that there's an evaporative leak or, or, or uh, something going on that's causing you to, causing that light to go on. So what's happening is now the computer is doing all these self tests, okay? And and it hasn't got to the evap test yet. Now you're kind of lucky because that car is going to have six or eight monitors and you're allowed to have one of those, I believe, not passed. It is not uncommon for that evap system to not run. So you could take your chances and go down for a test. And if all the other ones have run but evap hasn't, you might go through, but I'm not sure if EVAP is the one of the ones that you have to have or not. Um, so, but that's the protection that's in place from the, you know, mandated by the government. The car manufacturers have to program them this way, and the state has to test this way. The, the car has to do the self test. So, there's, it's very, very, very hard to cheat. The other thing that, um, well, my phone's ringing, I guess, or maybe that's Dave. <laughs> the uh, the other thing that you said initially is you need a smoke test. And what they mean by that is they probably found a code for an evaporative system leak. And that's the vapor side of the gas tank, not the liquid side. And you can have a very, very small leak. It could even be a gas cap that's leaking. And so we can do a test on the gas cap. Then what we do with very, very low pressure we're going to pressurize the fuel system, the vapor side, and we inject in there smoke. Picture your little choo-choo train when you were a kid. This machine generates smoke. Some of that smoke has dye in it, and then we can go around with glasses and a special light, a very bright light, and we look where that smoke is coming from, and voila, there's your leak. Not as easy as it sounds. Sometimes you got to drop the gas tank down. Sometimes there's really not even an external leak. There's a check valve or an electronic control cylinder that has hung up. 
So it's allowing the air to bypass through that through that check valve and it is not leaking externally. So that's what they mean by the smoke test. So you might get lucky, but don't hold your breath. And then Pascal brought up a good point during the break, and he's too shy to talk here, so I'll say it for him. The uh, When you're getting fuel, don't top off. Do not top off. Just when that thing kicks off, leave it be. It's not going to make the difference between you running out or not more than likely. You're only going to get a, you know 12 more ounces in there maybe or whatever it is. But the reason is there's a vent valve at the top of that of that filler neck. And if you overfill that and top off, that fuel will run down into that vapor line and could get ingested into the engine that way and saturate the charcoal canister. It could, you know, it could cause other problems. So it's just not worth it. Just just top just don't top off. When the thing clicks off, just move on, move on with your with your day and 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 get gas again. So uh, we're going to quickly talk about an email of the week. We It comes in from a listener who says, I have a, I'm going to summarize. I have a check engine light that comes on with a code, something about a fuel sensor. Got a 2004 Ford Explorer. It's an intermittent problem. It happens for about a half a second while driving, maybe three to four times a week. It doesn't happen when he's accelerating or slowing down. Just when you're cruising, it starts to just hiccup or have a problem and they went to a local chain and that chain says well let me see here it might it's possibly a factor set factory setting in the computer system somewhere that might be out of spec and only the Ford dealer can work on that and I got to tell you you got bad advice absolutely because any shop that has the current technology can reflash that computer i think that's probably what they're trying to insinuate that there's a update of the software just like your pc or anything that can correct that problem uh, so i have a different take on that to me what that means is we really don't know what it is we don't have the equipment to fix your car it's not easy to do we're only interested in the easy repairs move on go to the dealer we don't want it that's my my that's my cynical take on it um and that brings me to another topic I'll talk about when I had my eye surgery done, the LASIK. I interviewed people, and everybody did the LASIK. Same machine, same everybody. But the guy that I chose, he's a doctor. He's a medical doctor, not a guy that knows how to use the laser machine. Medical doctor. He said the difference between me and those other guys, when something goes wrong on this operating table, I'm here. I know how to take care of you. The other guys, they're calling 911. So when you're going to pick your repair shop, Pick somebody that can take care of your entire car, not just the easy stuff. Reward them for everything. And you're going to find guys like that at BumperToBumperRadio.com. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Scott, General Manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions, for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at tricitytransmission.com. Go where the pros go. Try City Transmission. It's really coming down now. And that little voice is saying shoulda, coulda, woulda. You meant to call Keiko Roofing last storm, but you didn't, did you? Now it's raining cats and dogs. And Mr. Shoulda, coulda, woulda is watching a puddle form on the ceiling. If the roof on your home or business is over 10 years old, get rid of shoulda, coulda, woulda. Call Keiko Roofing at 602-944-4600 for a free checkup today. At Keiko, we install peace of mind with the finest material and the most skilled workers, all backed by the owner's pride guarantee. Flat, foam, tile, or shingle, Kaiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Kaiko has you covered. Since 1994, Kaiko has repaired or replaced tens of thousands of valley roofs, over 50% of our business coming from referrals or repeat customers. In fact, over 98% of our customers say they would refer us to a friend. For more information and financing options, go to KaikoRoofing.com. Kaiko Roofing. We're crazy about quality. Hi. This is Greg LaFonsi of Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. Long name, right? But we have a short, simple goal. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority, and everything else takes care of itself. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved. ADS is a family-owned and operated state-of-the-art repair facility that has an expert staff that for the second straight year has earned the coveted AAA Top Shop Award as one of the best shops in the nation. Just east of I-10 on Channel Boulevard. Find us at AutomotiveDiagnosticSpecialties.com. 
few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. All righty, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, and we're going to get busy. We've got three phone calls holding and a little bit of time to take these. And so we're going to go first right away to Richard in Phoenix, and he has got a 67 Mustang. Yep. What's up, Richard? Good morning. Thank you for an excellent show. You're welcome. Thanks for listening. They need to put you on TV. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway. You, you should see me. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I, I didn't want to say that. Um, I've been a mechanic for 60 years, and on a 67 Mustang, it helps settle an argument. It's okay. pulling to the left, and uh, my Ford guy said, oh, you know, wheel cylinder. Okay. Well, it wasn't, and I t- so I took it apart myself on the right. It had a restrictor plate in it uh, oh. between the the metal cups and, and the uh, uh, rubbers. It had a plate, a restrictor plate with a hole drilled in it mm-hmm. uh, because someone was trying to correct uh, the pulling. But, oh. of course, that oh. Oh, there, the problem the... with the return. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it before in my life. Uh, the Ford guy claims that uh, the original equipment in Fords. You know, I don't know. 67 Mustang was three years before I was even being thought about being born. And, I, and to be quite honest with you, I, you know, besides the old Volkswagens and stuff, Porsches I've worked on, I haven't done much front drum brake work. But was the car pulling under braking or just driving? Oh, no, uh, under braking. Okay. But so- like I say, I corrected. The problem, because there was a restrictor plate Mm -hmm. put inside this cylinder that made and put in there, and I say it wasn't from the factory, and they said it was, and and that sticks in my mind. I'm listening to you. Maybe you've got a a listener or someone that uh, will answer that, uh, but I have never seen that. And it makes no sense. You know, Uh, I I don't know, but I'll tell you what, to cure your curiosity— uh, if you went to a website called Centric Parts or CentricBrakes.com, that's a very good brake supplier. I went and took a tour of their facility. The place is amazing, what they remanufacture there and what they manufacture in their cataloging department and the wealth of experience that they have. They would be able to answer that question. I don't know, Dave. <laughs> well, uh, you know, first of all, who's they said? Well, no, that, that that's my question. Well, they it, they is the Ford no, the Ford guy, the, the Ford, Ford guy. Yeah, I think you can. There, there's numerous websites that you can go to to find exploded views of the original equipment parts. Yeah, if you if you put that in there. Now, quite frankly, uh, I have seen lots of. Uh, wheel cylinder <laughs> brake systems in my time, and I don't ever recall seeing a restrictor plate in a wheel cylinder. Yeah. You have the you have the two outer boot cup and the cups and the and spring. the push pistons and the, and the spring. So um, yeah. you know, I'm, who knows? Maybe it sounds like somebody was trying to get around a problem at at some point. But Richard, that good question, but but uh, trivia. You know, that's one for a trivial pursuit, I guess. Hey, speaking of Mustangs. I've got this customer uh, uh, who is having me help his wife sell the car. Uh, He unfortunately passed away. He became a good friend over the years. And uh, I've got a 2012 Boss 302 Mustang. I'll tell you what, this car is very unique. It runs like a cut cat. (laughs) It's orange. It's got the track key programming in it. It's got some neat stuff. So if you're in the market for a 2012 Mustang hot rod, give me an email, mallen at ktar.com, and I'll get you hooked up with that car if you're you're truly interested. So we've got a couple more minutes to go here. We're going to take Adam in Levine, not Adam Levine, on a 99 Chevy Malibu. Adam, you're up. What can we help you with? Hello, Adam. Are you there? Hey, this is Adam, yeah. Yes, what can we help you with in your Malibu? Um, well, what's going on with it is, like, every time I pull up to a light, it seems to accelerate from, like, 700 RPMs to about 15, 2,000 RPMs. And, like, it wants to pull when you let off the brake. And then it'll run fine, and then it won't do it again, uh, like the next light. But then it'll do it again. 
Okay. And it doesn't matter if it's cold or if it's uh, warmed up. So I'm just curious on what that might be. Do you have a high or normal idle when the car is cold and these cold mornings you got to start it? Does it go up to twelve or 1,400 like it's supposed to or whatever range it you think it should be in? Uh, yeah, because it runs, it runs at about like seven hundred, mm-hmm. and and then it, it, it'll, when I start it up, it'll it'll go up like you know what I mean from when it's cold, mm-hmm. but then it you know drops back down, and when I go to uh, take off, you know it's fine, everything like that. It just when I when I come up to a light or stop, it feels like it wants to pull. Okay. And, Okay, there's a couple things that, that we're going to want to be looking at, and I don't, again, I don't know if you're trying to fix this yourself or, or the repair shop, but if that came in to me, what we're going to be looking at is the throttle body area. That's where the air enters the engine. We're going to check and make sure that the throttle cable, the accelerator cable, is not binding up. So we might disconnect that cable from the linkage and, and operate the pedal and feel the cable to make sure it's not bound up. That would be maybe one of the first things. We're just going to manually feel how that throttle blade works and maybe it's binding up itself. The other thing that could be happening, we're going to pull the air intake boot off that's between the air filter and that housing and we're going to look in there in in the throttle body and see if that's full of black soot and carbon. That could be binding up that throttle blade. And then the other thing in there, there's what's called an idle air control motor. And what's happening is the computer monitors all kinds of things that are happening with the engine and it has a desired RPM. And what it's going to do, it's going to open that valve a little bit to let more air in. It's going to increase the idle, similar to you stepping on the gas. And what happens, they get plugged up, they need to get cleaned out. And uh, so we can take that out sometimes, clean that port. We can also, if we have the right scan tool, and I talk about, Dave talks about the shops having the right technology. And in the 99, I think most everybody does. And uh, we can hook up our scan tool, and we might be able to manually operate that motor, force it closed and force it open, and see if it's binding up. Uh, that that's where I'm going to go clean that up. So, and then we also need to test. There's there's wires going to that sensor, and we need to test and make sure that those are good, and that the computer actually has the ability to control the idle. And I don't know if Bree is trying to put me to sleep with this music. This is like we're coming to the end, and I'm I'm getting sleepy. Dave, Pascal. Thanks for coming. Dave, tell us about your shop real quick. Where are you? We're at 51st Avenue in Peoria in 2015. We're celebrating our 35th year in business. Uh, Master ASE Techs, come see us. Thank you for supporting Bumper to Bumper. All righty, and we will see you next week. And with any luck, Dave Ricky will be back. I'm Matt Allen. Thanks, Bree. Have a great weekend. Come join Bunker to Bunker the Golf Show at Trilogy at Visancia by Shea Holmes on Saturday, January 24th from 10 till 4 as they celebrate the grand opening and introduction of another 900 plus home sites at the Trilogy at Visancia Tour Center. They'll be closest to the pin contest, live music, wine tasting, gift cards to V's Tap Room, and more. Reserve your private tour and check out special pricing and initial release of home sites. For more info, visit TrilogyLife.com forward slash Vistancia. Come live the Trilogy Life. Thank you, Arizona golf fans. Thanks to you, the Waste Management Phoenix Open is about to top $100 million in charitable giving. For all the birdies made by the PGA Tour pros, it's really Arizona's charities that sit atop our leaderboard. So stand up and take a bow as the Thunderbirds and Thunderbirds charities thank you for your incredible support. Celebrate this milestone at the Waste Management Phoenix Open, January 26th through February 1st at TPC Scottsdale. Visit WMPhoenixOpen.com world-class and in your own backyard. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is just around the corner at 7th Street in Virginia. And for over 19 years, they've been recognized as one of the best auto repair shops in the country. Voted best auto repair by AZ Central, A-plus rated by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranty, and complimentary transportation to and from your home or office. Virginia Auto. They're serious about service. See for yourself. VirginiaAutoService.com. Join us for everything automotive on Bumper to Bumper Radio with Dave Riccio and Matt Allen, the KTAR Car Guys, every Saturday, 11 to noon on KTAR News 92.3 FM. Winter is finally here. Is your car ready? Whether it's snow up north, rain in the valley, or 75 degrees, Dave and Matt got you covered. And remember, 24-7, there's BumperToBumperRadio.com.